If you're pulled to something, I think you have to go off and do it. I try so many things that don't work. I think they're great, but the data will tell you. And be proud of the ghetto roots. Yeah, it's the process. What's up, man? How's it going, Evan? Another Evan. Yes. Two Evans now. I'm from Boston, but um, living and working out here in China, teaching English. Cool, man. How can I help? What do you got? I've been teaching English for five years out here, and I've been teaching at a university and then started a tutoring business, having students come to my home. Um, and then we opened a separate place, and me and my wife opened a separate place for teaching. And recently, I decided to try to take this business online, doing tutoring online, and I'm starting to build courses, English courses. Uh, but I want to focus on not just China, because they don't have access to uh, Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, the, the websites that I used to use. So mm. I'm looking to build um, courses and recruit people uh, and have students. So I just started using Instagram about, about a month ago, uh, making a lot of posts every day, trying to interact with every single student uh, English learner that I've talked to. And I've had people from all over the world. It's been really amazing, really fun. But of course, like everyone else, I want the numbers to go up uh, of followers and likes and comments and all that. But one thing I want to do is uh, communicate with each person uh, directly. So I want to know uh, how, how do you communicate with everyone? How can you try to keep the quality where you're keeping things personal, but you're also scaling and expanding at the same time? If I look at my Instagram, for example, we went from 6,000 subscribers or followers at the beginning of last year mm -hmm. to now 150 whatever thousand, because I started taking it more seriously, mm -hmm. posting better content, um, spending a lot more time on it. Uh, I will still do the first message that comes in. So anybody who DMs me, I'll still do the first message that goes out. Like if you've DM me, I've sent you back a message. Okay. Uh, after that, my wife and my team take over. So uh, otherwise there's zero, I don't have enough time. Like there's not enough time in the day to actually manage all of the comments that come in. As you grow, it's gonna be a problem. Just like any business. Exactly, like yeah. if, if you grew your business to, to being all over China, it's not gonna be you going into every class and saying, hey, here I am teaching. Like you have right. to hire other instructors. Right. Right? You have yeah. to. It's just any business is how it grows. So apply the same logic to social media. Great, these are your customers. And at the beginning, you do everything yourself, just like you probably did when you started your English teaching company. I did it. Here I am. I can teach English. Who wants to sign up with me? You know, I'll help you learn the language. You're doing everything. Maybe ask some friends for help. Your wife got involved. Great. But you're doing everything. As you grow, as you scale, as you start making some money, then you invest it into your team, and they help fill the parts that are not the most important to you. So... I love the community stuff. Like when I travel, I love meeting people in the different cities who are part of Believe Nation. Yep. It's my favorite thing to do. It's not the only way to win though. Lots of people don't spend personal time on Instagram doing live sessions or personal responding to their DMs. So it's a good strategy, but is it the right strategy for you? Like, do you love it? Do you like interacting with people? I do. That's, that's, that's why I'm doing it. That's why I'm going on to the internet rather than just doing it in person here. Because, you know, before I'm working with only Chinese. But to me, I, I, I want to travel the world without even having to travel the world. So I just, had, I just did two hours of live and I talked to people from Iran, from Japan, from Brazil, from Mexico. And I do love it. But I'm just worried that I'm like telling these people, yeah, you can always contact me. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you practice individually. But then... You know, I'm getting like an inbox full and I'm spending as much time as possible now answering everyone. But I know, like you said, once it scales up, once it reaches a higher level, like you can't do that all yourself. So I don't want them to think like uh, I wasn't being sincere about it in the first place. You see what I'm saying? Well, that's, uh, here's, here's how you start to expand it out. Time with you starts to become valuable. Mm. At the beginning, nobody knows you. So time with you. Whatever. <laughs> There's no demand for your time. As you scale, there'll be more and more demands in your time. Hey, Evan, can I have a free two-hour session? Hey, Evan, I'm studying for a test. Can you help me with this? Hey, Evan, you know, you'll, you'll get more and more demands in your time. And so 
the way, there's lots of ways to handle it. Um, the way that you're probably most comfortable with it is if it's, if it's public, you can make it free. If it's private, you can charge for it. Okay. Right. With a certain percentage that, that can always be free, right? If somebody, you could say like 10% of the people that you take on, you're not going to charge. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be very specific and strategic now over who you're going to do for free. And now a private session with you costs whatever. X so amount per hour. It leads into the, the tutoring sessions or... Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I see what you're saying. Yeah, so you could do Simple first point of contact as a free DM, right? Mm -hmm. But then if they want ongoing help, you send them the link to your coaching page. The other option is if you're making it, if you do it free, then you do it public. So, yeah. hey, join me on an IG Live mm -hmm. and I'll help you for free. Right. That's, that's what I just started doing only about a week ago. And I found that to be really useful because... You know, if their friends join or if they join, then all their friends can can join in as well. And it can help me grow and get seen as well, especially if you're targeting people. If you work with people who have a bigger Instagram following than you, mm -hmm. when you both go live, it notifies their audience that they went live with you. Yeah. So you're yeah. hacking their audience. Yeah. And I've been lucky enough to do that because I've talked to some teachers and I found that the, the English teacher community is really cool about this. So I've talked to older teachers or teachers who've been doing this online for a while. And they like invited me just to, to chat. And uh, yeah, I've been, I've found a lot of students through them or I've found a lot of followers through that. So that's good. And I want to ask you one more question. Can I ask you another one while I got you here? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I like, I really like watching Gary V videos and uh, okay. I heard him saying something, I don't remember the exact number, but something I was watching today, he was talking about putting out as much content as possible. Uh, that's not what he said. He said putting out, I think he said like 18 posts a day or 16 posts a day. And for the last month since I started uh, Instagram, I've been doing uh, six posts a day. And it's like following a pattern of a word of the day, a translation challenge, um, a question of the day, and a live vi uh, short video of me. So all these different things. So I'm listening to what he's saying, and I'm thinking, okay, should I like double that number? Should I go up to 12? Should I try to do more? I think I can, I know I can still do that and keep the quality high. But do you think at, at certain, at a point, it becomes like too much? It can kind of become... Uh, annoying or do you think at this stage where I am I should really just be trying to push it to the max what's your take on that so with Instagram it's an algorithm now and so not everybody's gonna see all your stuff mm -hmm. there's a different audience each time even though you have your your core group of people who watch almost mm -hmm. everything it's it's a matter of is it working and so are you a business account on Instagram yeah great you have, you have insights now, you have analytics, you can see how well your posts are doing. Yep. Are your posts, now that you're making, the first challenge for thought leaders is making consistent content. So you're there, six a day, pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm at six a day too. I do three IGTVs a day and three posts, pictures a day. Um, that seems to be a good balance for me. I haven't figured out how to go to eight a day, 10 a day and have the ROI be worth it. Okay. So, so what we do is you look at your, you look at your series. Now, now that your first problem is solved in that you are consistent, you look at your series. So you have word of the day, translation of the day, whatever of the day. Great. You look at your analytics and see, are these kinds of posts leading to growth for my account? Okay. It'll tell you how many followers did you get from this post? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've been using that already, and I've been trying to time those at the best uh, at the best times. Because, like I said, I have people from all over the world, so I'm trying to figure out the time zone where things are most uh, most likely to be seen as they come up. Okay, but, but you look at you go look at your last ten word of the days. Mm -hmm. Go through the insight. I mean, you, Instagram analytics kind of sucks because you have to go so manually one at a time. It's not it's not like YouTube where it's easy to group things together. But you go look at your last 10 word of uh -huh. the days and see, did it lead to more followers from my account? Okay. And if it's consistently yes, then great. Like maybe you should do more word of the days. Like maybe find another angle. Maybe okay. you do like conversation word of the day versus something in the news word of the day. Mm -hmm. Or maybe word of the day sucks. Like maybe word of the day, nothing, right? So like stop that and and – do something else. 
Okay. It is actually it is actually the lowest one, and I find that the question of the day seems to be the highest, and it's because it 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 creates the most interaction. So my question simply, today I talked about my passport. I taught them about passports and visas, and I showed a, an American passport. It's dark blue. And I said, like, what color is your passport? And I just had 50, 60 people going back and forth with me and with each other. So I find that, like, engagement in a question is good, whereas a word of the day, they, they, don't, they, they might click like, but I don't think they're following a page because of it uh, or interacting with it. So I see what you're saying well, with that. Yeah, you don't have to think. It'll tell you, right? Right. Like, at the beginning, you, you try because you think this is a good idea. Like, why not? Word of the day sounds great. I try so many things that don't work. I think they're great, but the data will tell you. And so okay. you face so the really, first really challenge. Focus on the analytics more because I, I look at it, but because I only started, uh, I only turned it into a business page uh, a little more than a week ago. I'm still kind of okay. learning how to use that because yeah. I've never seen those before. So, 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 so keep going on your schedule. Go, go 10 deep. If it's word of the day, then, then, you know, over the next two weeks, you'll have your 10 plus mm -hmm. and then go look at the data and say, okay, wow, I got, I gained, I, I posted 10 posts word of the day and I gained two followers because of it. Okay. I'm going to kill that series and go try to do something else. All right. I mean, yeah, that's that the game sense. and constantly trying to beat, like you always try to beat the worst one. Okay. Right. So maybe soon question of the day becomes the worst one because you've tried so many new great things that keep crushing it. Right, kind of right? leapfrogging over it. Sure, 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 yeah. And, and the data will tell you what's working, what's, any one post can pop, but it's can you consistently get people checking out your stuff? And so that's why you wanna go 10 deep on the analytics to see. Okay, so yeah, I'm really gonna focus on those. I'm gonna do more research on that and, and, and keep track of them better. Cause yeah, I'm kind of looking at it with like a feeling of like, oh, I'm proud to see these numbers going up, but I know that's not the way to be looking at it. I should see like, which things are, are, are stronger, which things are weaker, where can I improve, right? Especially at the beginning, it'll be, it'll be more than the 80-20 rule. It'll be like the 95-5 rule. It'll be, you'll have one series that crushes it. Like maybe your question of the day, it's great to see numbers going up, but maybe it's maybe ninety five percent of it's all coming from your question of the day, right? And so you're doing all this extra work that's that's useless. Okay. Which is great. Yeah. Like it's an experiment. You test it, but now you know. And so either either fix word of the day, like mm -hmm. maybe the words you're picking are are not good, or just yeah. the concept doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So kind of try try to fix the problem rather than just throw it out. Yeah. Well, either one. I, I, I'll always, de if I love the series, I'll try to fix it. Or maybe just, maybe just something that I care about that isn't actually that helpful. Okay. You know, yeah. maybe you guessed wrong. Well, I guess okay. You make tons of mistakes along the way. That's part of creating the content calendar. Not every, not every book pops, not every TV show on a network sells, you know, does great numbers. Of course, it's part yeah. of, even though the creators loved it, that just may not yeah. may not work. It's okay. Next. Yeah, and I and I also think like with with Instagram, you know, a lot of people are they're scrolling through hundreds, thousands of posts every day. So you kind of gotta make it more catchy. Whereas I think the word of the day, it's like if somebody is going to my page for the purpose of studying, then it's useful for them. But if somebody's just scrolling, my question might pull them in. But a word of the day, it's like they see it and they just scroll past it. So I maybe, think that's part. So maybe something like word of the day becomes an uh, uh, email follow-up sequence for you. You say, if it's important for people who want to study, oh, then sign up and maybe, get it. yeah, like maybe you go from, here's my, all my free Instagram content and my free coaching on Instagram and all that. Great. And in your bio, you have a link, your bio link goes to your website and on your website or landing page, you have a, a sign up for your email that goes every day with a new word. Okay. Yeah. That's a really good idea. I like, it, it could, I like what you've been saying. I, that makes sense. It could be a video too, right? Like, hey, it's okay. Evan. Today's word of the day is whatever. You spend, uh, you, it's not long, right? A minute? Yep. How long is the video? Very short. Very, very short. 10, 10 15 seconds. Oh, great. So you can add a little more depth maybe, but, mm -hmm. you know, quick video. You're sitting there in your, your, your a condo or house, whatever. Awesome. Today's word of the day is happy. Happy means this. Great. And use it. Yep. And give them a use. And then, of it. and then, in your email sequence, you can have a, a a PS that hey, if you want help 
coaching, I have this coaching package. Linked it in there. Okay. Yeah. So if you had a thousand people every day getting your word of the day for free, free training, mm -hmm. some of them will convert to want to then sign up for your coaching package and they're getting it in their inbox every day, okay. every single day. And they're getting value instead of hoping that they find you through scrolling on Instagram. Does that mean you would think uh, if I'm if I'm doing this by emailing it to them, do you think it should not be in both places? Would that be like overkill to still keep it in the uh, Instagram feed? Or I, I wouldn't put it in both places. I would I would make it feel a little more exclusive. These are okay. these are special videos. Yeah, for being okay. Yeah, for being on my list. And I, I, I went there because you said, well, people scrolling on Instagram don't want to see this, but it's really helpful for people who actually want to learn and study the language. Okay. Gotcha. So if that's who you want, people who want to study and learn the language, who's going to hire a, a coach? Who's going to hire someone like you to help them with their English? Somebody who cares about studying and learning the language. Right. Somebody who's going into it for study. Yeah. So, so Instagram is your top of funnel awareness campaign that then leads to your email sequence for the people who are dedicated to this, that then if they're getting the word of the day every day from you, the next time like I got to travel or I got a test or I'm not sure how to do this or I have a job interview or whatever, something mm -hmm. comes up that then becomes yeah. urgent. I've been seeing your word of the day every day for the past three months. Like I'm just going to hire him okay. and you have it in your PS every time, right? Today's word of the day is happy video link. Yes. PS. If you want, yeah, you want, you want coaching, you want my time for an hour or 30 minutes, here's the link. All right. People so another, a, a very basic question, a stupid question, maybe that sounds stupid. <laughs> what, uh, what could you, do you have any, any name of a, uh, what do you call it? Like a, that kind of service, uh, to do the automated emails for that. There's a whole bunch. Um, Is there any you can recommend I, just because the reason I ask is when I, when I Google these things and I read people's, uh, uh, conflicting advice I, I find that uh, there's a lot of junk out there so it's, it's a commodity it's service like it's a commodity service dude that there, there's not that big a difference in functionality okay. um, I've I've used Aweber for the past I don't know 12 13 years um, I'm looking at using click funnels and their CRM program because it ties into the whole website mm -hmm. um, but MailChimp any of them. Okay. I've heard of what you want to do is so basic. Yeah. Like the functionality is. Yeah. Okay. I would probably do like unlisted YouTube videos mm -hmm. for up to a minute. Like yeah. give me a little more meat this time. So like the word of the day is how it's not a lot of meat, right? You could just right. come up with something. Yeah. Right? I, I usually like pre make uh, a week on Sunday. I go into it and spend a couple hours and come up with it, how it's going to look and everything. And yeah, pre do them. So, I can still do that, even if they're a minute or so. Yeah, up to one minute, one minute long. YouTube videos unlisted that you send me an email every morning so I can improve my language. And, and whether you use Aweber or ClickFunnels or MailChimp or Close enough. Yeah, Constant Contact, it's all the same. For what you all need right. to do, it's all the same. Yeah, there's a lot of learning, a lot of learning parts for me because I'm, I'm new to this, but I'm ready to learn it all, so... Well, now it's back to the original question that you had yesterday, which is, do I stay focused or do I do this thing, right? If you're pulled to something, I think you have to go off and do it. Like, if you never did this, you would regret it. I've been talking to myself and my friends about it for five years, like, ever since I came here. This is a good idea. I should do this. I should do this. I should do this. And then I'm just like, yo, it's been five years. Are you going to keep saying this for another five years? Like, no, just... Just, just do it and, and, and grow from grow from your mistakes. And I feel I've already been doing that in the first week. And I know I've, I got a lot more mistakes coming. And I'm all right. Great. I mean, sure, right you expect mistakes, sure. but you have to do it because because you're gonna if you wait another five years, you're gonna be pissed. Mm -hmm. it's like I've been talking about this for ten years. What am I doing? You know, like this right. this is a, a huge potential opportunity. Now you may start it and you may hate it. Like yeah. you don't know if you like sushi until you try it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like a good business model, but who knows? It is a good business model, but it may not be the one for you. But but you won't know till you go off and try it. Yeah. But you can also be like you're married. You know how to commit when you want to commit. Mm -hmm. 
So if it works, you'll find, you'll find the path. It'll help grow your business. You don't have to worry about constantly being in a million different directions. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things that stopped me from jumping in before. I was like, should I do it this way or should I do it this way or should I focus on? But then I realized just like kind of hop in and, and, and that's what I decided to do and learning as I go rather than like trying to have the perfect plan because I know that's never going to work. So have you heard my theory on the 2% difference? No, I have not yet. The 2% difference is this. As soon as you get an idea, you find the way to get 2% of the way. Don't, we default to planning and strategizing and thinking and tinkering. And then you wake up tomorrow, a different person, the boldness is gone. And then you don't know, you never do anything. And now it's five years in the making and you're still in planning mode. Yeah. Where the best thing you can do is just take the first 2%. Like just, just email everybody who you have or, or do a video on your Instagram today or anybody you've DM'd with and say, hey, I'm starting this thing. Even if you just collect their, their email addresses and you send it through Gmail. Okay. Like start word of the day tomorrow. Okay. Start it it's going to be ghetto. It's not, it's barely going to work, but, but it's like, it's momentum. Right. And you commit it to other build people. On it rather than let the idea just fade away. Cause the idea, the more you build on the idea, the bigger it becomes, which is exciting, but then it's, it becomes impossible because it's too right. big. There's too many layers. It requires too much. Now you need money and now you need a team and now you need the perfect website and now you need the perfect email service and now you need, and then you never do anything. Hmm. Yeah, I see exactly where, what you're saying. Just get started. And... Like dummies have won off of your idea. Dummies mm -hmm. who just show up and just make probably tons of grammatical errors and they're already getting people following them and they're selling their services just because they started and did it. I hear exactly what you're saying. So not just so, take the so, ball, but get the ball rolling, 2%. Yeah, the first 2%. You get an idea, it's immediate action. Get 2% of the way with action. If you don't do that, you'll never get to the 100. We're, we're trying to plan to get to the 100 with the perfect. Your idea won't, won't be what it ends up being anyway. Like yep. how you start is never how you finish. Mm -hmm. So it's just starting. So tomorrow, like if it's a cool idea, then tomorrow should be uh, – I'm going to start word of the day tomorrow. I'm going to DM 20 people and say, I'm doing word of the day. What do you think? Give me an email address and you put it into your Gmail and tomorrow you send your first word of the day. All right. And be proud it. of the ghetto roots. Yeah. It's the process. It's the journey. Yeah. Like it, you started from nothing. All right. I'm, I'm yeah. going to do it. I'm going to cool, do it. Man. I'm going to start working on it right now. I'm going to, I'm I love going to let it. you go. Thank you, I love for, it. thank you for, uh, for answering this call. If you want to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with me, I have a special offer happening right now. Go check out the website right next to me. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.